thoughts as we end our closed session. May I have a motion to return to open session and approve the certificate of closed meeting 17-18-9 for the closed session. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Mill Richards, seconded by Ms. Boyd. Um, may I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Approval of the agenda. So moved. <laughs> Second. May I have a motion to approve our agenda? <laughs> so moved. Second. All right. So moved by Ms. Mill Richards, seconded by um, Ms. Kay. Are there any changes or discussion? Oh, we wanted to add Mr. Bailey was going to give us a an update on the recycling. So we'd like to add that. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. All right, next we have the approval of the minutes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the work session of the school board held on Jul January 8th, 2018? So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Mo Boyd, seconded by Ms. Mill Richards. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Um, and that passes unanimously. All right, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the January 8th regular school board meeting? Are there any changes or discussion? So moved. Yes. Moved by Ms. Brewer Richards, seconded by um, Mr. Bailey. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Next, we come to our favorite part of the meeting, the recognitions. Um, we'll start with word of the month, open-minded to pre be presented by James Monroe High School. Go. Where am I? <laughs> I must have last week's. Well, Hugh Mercer is going to do, what is Hugh Mercer gonna do for us? <laughs> Open-minded. Oh, they're ready for JM. <laughs> <laughs> they just look so young. Good evening, Board Chairman Ream, Board Members, Dr. Melton, families and friends. It's my pleasure to introduce second graders under the instruction of Hugh Mercer Health and PE teacher and James Monroe High School baseball coach, Tony Wishard. They will be presenting the FCPS Word of the Month, open-minded. Actually, that's two words. Our second graders are from the classes of Ms. Siprich, Ms. Mimmer, and Mrs. Moss. And at the conclusion, they will each introduce themselves. Mr. Wishard. Great, great job, Hugh Mercer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wishard.
Next we have the. Oh, no, it is a board members. <coughs> recognition of school board members. <laughs> Good evening, school board chairperson Rainey, Superintendent Melton, school board members, colleagues, family, and friends. Fredericksburg City will join 132 other school divisions throughout the state to celebrate School Board Appreciation Month in February. Almost 850 elected and appointed school board members throughout Virginia will be recognized by schools and communities for their service and dedication to public education. For the second consecutive time, the Fredericksburg City Public School Board has earned the VSBA Board of Distinction Award. Let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> the award is earned through the countless hours the board members devote to attending training programs and working with special projects in our division. The theme of this year's celebration advancing opportunities for all, reflects the top priority of local school board members as they advocate for public education with local, state, and federal leaders. The foundation of school leadership is ensuring equal learning opportunities for all students. We're proud of our division, and School Board Appreciation Month is the time to recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of our elected trustees. We'll start with Reverend Jarvis Bailey. Reverend Bailey was appointed to the school board in July of 2007 to fill an unexpired term. He was elected in 2008 for his first full term. He represents the citizens as a member at large. Reverend Bailey has served on the school board for over 10 years. Reverend Bailey has been an active member of the Virginia School Board Association having served in regional offices, including chairperson and chair of the Finance Committee, Reverend Bear. Let's give him a hand. Okay. Mrs. Jennifer Boyd. Mrs. Boyd was appointed to the school board in July of 2016 to fill an unexpired term. She has since been elected in a special election in November of 2016 to represent the citizens of Ward 3. Prior to becoming a member of the board, Mrs. Boyd served on various committees and as the PTA president at Lafayette Upper Elementary School. As the newest member of the board, board Mrs. Boyd stays active in attending various conferences on a variety of educational issues. Mrs. Boyd, thank you. In her absence, Ms. Janet Holmes, Ms. Holmes was, the, was first elected to the school board in July of 2010 to represent the citizens of Ward 3. After representing Ward 3 for six years, Ms. Holmes was elected to an at-large seat in 2016. She stays highly involved in advocacy issues with attendance at state and national meetings. Ms. Holmes is a familiar face within the division schools through her presence at various school events and serves as the board's liaison on the Head Start Policy Council. Let's give a hand to Ms. Holmes. <laughs> Ms. Malvina Rollins K. Ms. K was appointed to the school board in July of 1991 by city council. When school board members became elected, she was among the first elected members in 1994 and has represented the citizens of Ward 4 for 26 years. During her tenure, Ms. Kay has closely worked with school personnel in regard to fiscal accountability and budgeting. Ms. Kay has also focused on minority achievement throughout her tenure. Ms. Kay. Mrs. Barbara Miller Richards. Mrs. Miller Richards was first elected to the school board in July of 1998. She represents the citizens of Ward 2 and has served on the school board for 19 years. Mrs. Miller Richards is a strong advocate for ensuring positive school and community relations. She actively attends school events, student activities, and school athletic events throughout the school division. Ms. Miller Richards. Mrs. Elizabeth Rehm. 
Mrs. Ream was appointed to the school board in July of 2012 to fill an unexpired term. She was then elected in a special election in November 2012. She represents the citizens of Ward 1. Mrs. Ream has served on, served on the school board for over five years and currently serves as chairperson. Ms. Reams. Thank you all for your outstanding service to the community. We appreciate what you do. So we'd like to recognize the, um, this is School Board Clerk's Appreciation Week. Um, and so I have a proclamation to read, a certificate of recognition. By virtue of the authority vested by the Constitution of Virginia in the governor, in the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, there is hereby officially recognized School Board Clerk Appreciation Week. Whereas school board clerks in each locality throughout the Commonwealth are appointed by law to fulfill their duties and responsibilities. And whereas school board clerks are responsible for keeping accurate records of the meetings and proceedings of the school board, a record of all receipts and disbursements and a record of all official acts. And whereas school board clerks perform other duties in connection with the school business of his or her county or city as may be required by the school board and whereas school board clerks maintain frequent contact with the public, including parents, employees, and the media, on behalf of the school board and superintendent, and whereas school board clerks in the performance of their duties are often required to work extra hours attending school board meetings, and whereas school board clerks ensure that students achieve their highest potential and provide an invaluable service for school board members and superintendents. Now, I, therefore, I, Ralph Northam, do hereby recognize, this is not me, um, February 19th through 23rd, 2018, as School Board Clerk Appreciation Week in our Commonwealth of Virginia. And I call this observance to the attention of all of our citizens. And I would just like to say, Debbie does a great job with all of those duties. All right, now Mr. Thomas. Okay. <clears throat> Madam Chair Reem, board members, Dr. Melton, colleagues, friends, good evening. Governor Ralph Northam declared January 22nd through the 26th as Virginia Principal Appreciation Week. This time I'd like to take a moment to recognize each of our principals due to their tremendous contributions to excellence throughout our school division. Mrs. Marjorie Tankersley. <laughs> Mrs. Tankersley has been principal at Hugh Mercer since July 1, 2000, and has amassed more than 35 years of educational experience. Since 1983, Mrs. Tankersley has served in the capacity of substitute teacher, elementary teacher, assistant principal, and principal at Hugh Mercer. Please recognize Mrs. Tankersley for her years of contributions to the school system. <laughs> Mr. Matthew Terry. Mr. Terry has been principal at Lafayette since January 17, 2012, and has accumulated 18 years of experience. Since 1999, Mr. Terry has served in the capacity of school psychologist, assistant principal, and principal of Lafayette Upper Elementary School. Let's please recognize Mr. Terry for his contribution to our school system. <laughs> Dr. Melanie K. Wyatt. Dr. Wyatt has been principal at Walker Grant Middle School since December the 6th, 2011, and has accumulated more than 21 years of experience in education. Dr. Wyatt has served in the capacity of special education teacher, uh, administrative intern, actually my administrative intern, <laughs> uh, assistant principal and principal of Walker Grant Middle School. Let's recognize Mrs. Dr. Y for her contributions. 
Dr. Tanisha Rochelle. Uh, Dr. Rochelle has been principal at James Monroe since July 1, 2014, and has accumulated over the years more than 20 years of experience in education. Uh, Dr. Rochelle has served as an English teacher, an assistant principal, and current principal of James Monroe. Let's give Dr. Rochelle a round of applause. The Fredericksburg City Public School Division Spelling Bee winner. On January 16th, Fredericksburg City Public Schools held its annual spelling, Division Spelling Bee competition. Over 16 students participated in the competition, ranging from grades 3 through 8. Uh, the competition lasted a rigorous 20 rounds. It is indeed my pleasure to recognize a gentleman with us this evening, the 2018 Division Spelling Bee winner, Joseph Gent. <laughs> Joseph is a sixth grade student at Walker Grant Middle School. He's a remarkable young man. I watched him throughout the competition and he demonstrated confidence and poise. Uh, Joseph will represent us at the Freelance Star Regional Spelling Bee Competition on March the 17th at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock a.m. at James Monroe, and Joseph is the son of Mrs. Varid Margalit and Mr. Hine. Let's congratulate Joseph and wish him well at the Fredericksburg Regional Spelling Bee Competition on March the 17th. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your attention. Good evening, Chairperson Ram, school board members, Dr. Melton, families and friends. James Monroe faculty members are asked to nominate a member of the senior class for recognition as the Optimist Club Student of the Month. The purpose of the award is to recognize students for their efforts in arts, athletics, academics, and community service work. I am pleased to recognize the following seniors who have been selected as the Optimist Student of the Month so far this school year. McCray Fiddler, son of Mr. James Fiddler, and Mrs. Tristan Fiddler. Ashley Kim, daughter of Mr. Juan Kim and Mrs. Yoon Kim. <laughs> Michaela Swain, daughter of Mr. Michael Swain and Mrs. Shanice Swain. Devin Terry, daughter of Mr. Andrew Terry and Mrs. Stephanie Terry. <laughs> and Miguel Hernandez, son of Dr. Rafael Hernandez and Mrs. Deborah Hernandez. Congratulations, students.
So that ends all of our recognitions for the night. Um, you're all welcome to stay and enjoy the rest of the meeting, or you're welcome to go ahead and, and leave. We'll um, take a brief pause and then continue on. There any now we have hearings of the citizens. Um, are there any citizens wishing to address the board this evening? have a motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. Moved by Ms. Boyd, may I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Bailey. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. And just to clarify, the second trip is an annual I have a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation. So moved. Moved by Ms. Boyd. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Bailey. Um, any discussion? We have a roll call vote. Yes. 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 Good evening once again. Mentoring has been an essential program that we've provided to our students all across the school division and tonight I'm delighted to recognize Mrs. Holly Stinchcomb who is here with us and members of the student body to do a presentation to the board on the SOTA program. Mrs. Stinchcomb. Good evening, Board Chairperson Ms. Reem, Board members, Dr. Melton, colleagues and friends. Um, I have the privilege to introduce our SOTA program. Uh, I uh, was uh, excited when Dr. Melton approached me about this particular program. I believe it was uh, probably six or seven years ago now. And uh, each year, Ms. Johnson and I have, have uh, tremendously enjoyed being the sponsors of this program. We appreciate Mr. Terry's support and 
letting us into his building every month with uh, our teenagers. So uh, a little bit about the SOTA program. It's, uh, it's a mentoring program where we take some of our students from James Monroe to Lafayette each month. And uh, they, they work with the fourth graders and they go over life lessons uh, such as peer relationships, peer pressure, responsibility, and being a good friend. And uh, I brought a few of our mentors with us today. I have Jenilee Satterwhite, Cindy Lee, and Gina Elkin. And I asked each of them to speak a little bit about something with the program that has been important to them, uh, a little something just to share with you what goes on at Lafayette when we go. Hello, um, my name is Jenilee Satterwhite, and this is my first year in the SOTA mentoring program. And I am so grateful to have the opportunity to be in this program because we are interacting with kids um, not that much younger than us, but at the point where they can look to us to inspire them, to keep on going with their education, and to know that they're not just sitting in a classroom for no reason. There's a reason that they are learning and that one day they can be like us and have fun and learn these, learn and experience these life lessons that we are teaching them. Um, we are, we have fun teaching them these, inter these um, lessons about bullying and being kind to others and having respect for your peers. We think it's very important that they learn this before it comes to the moment where they have to experience it and so that they'll know what to do and how to handle it. Um, we do this while having fun with them and gaining friendships with them and we think it's a very fun opportunity and we love doing it, every single one of us. And I'm just so happy that I'm a part of this program. Hello, my name is Cindy Lee and I'm um, in a second year of being a SOTA mentor. One of my favorite moments of being a SOTA mentor is when we help our students, mentees, understand the importance of kind words and communication. This was back, was back in December and during the holidays time, uh, and giving does not always have to be involved with giving gifts that is bought. Um, so helping someone or letting your friends and family know that you appreciate them may be worth more than giving gifts. After the lesson was over, two of the students gave us mentors notes that say thank you. And this shows that our lesson was effective since the students thought about us and appreciate us coming in mentoring them. Hi, my name is Gina Elkin. I'm an 11th grader at James Monroe and this is my second year at S in SOTA. They pretty much covered it all, but I think it's also important to note that yes, we're teaching them lessons, but it's also a lesson that we're teaching ourselves. The interaction that we gain with the fourth graders is more than just what we're teaching from the paper. It's the friendships that we do gain with the kids and the responsibility that grows through the year that you can't necessarily learn in a classroom. We're all dealing with our schedules, but this is a different sort of responsibility and it really sheds light into what our futures may hold. And it's really something that we all look forward to. I can speak on behalf of myself and very confidently on my peers. And I know the fourth graders, when we walk in the room, they're all smiling ear to ear. They're all yelling, they're so excited. And it's just, we equally look forward to that and it's a great opportunity to have. One of my uh, favorite moments would have to be, we were introducing ourselves, it was like the first day of the month, uh, back in October, I think. And we were just getting to know the kids and they were getting to read aloud their wishes that if they could have, like some said, I wish I could have a million dollars that sort of thing, but one student said that she wishes she could buy her teacher all the books that just to provide, and it was very sweet, and it's moments like those that keep me wanting to be in the club as of next year as well, so thank you. I just wanted to add uh, a little bit more to what Gina said about our students at JM also getting uh, something out of this program. I think each year when we go and we take the group for the first time, some of those who are new members are, uh, I'd say, pleasingly or pleasantly surprised when they get on the bus and they had such a good time. 
with the fourth graders and they do learn from it themselves. Uh, not only the fourth graders, but the high school students do. And it's fun hearing all the chatter on the bus back to JM about what certain students said and, and uh, notes that were given and hugs. So it's, um, it's been a blessing, I think, with both fourth graders and the JM students. So uh, we really appreciate the chance to do this program. And again, uh, Mr. Terry, thank you for allowing us in your building. Thank you. Financial report. If, if you JM students, if you guys have homework and you need to leave, feel free to go ahead and do that. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Mr. Baker. Good evening. I'll start off with the uh, financial report. Uh, what you have before you is the, the December 31st report, and just notably, we're still in good shape as far as any kind of variances on uh, expenditures and revenues. Uh, as usual, the revenues are very tight. In expenditures, we have a fairly good balance. Um, I will note that the uh, supplemental appropriation of the prior year fund balance has not occurred on the city side yet. Uh, it's going through the process now, and so that'll be a revision to the operating budget. It'll be the revised budget going forward, and you'll see some different figures at the bottom where I've added that uh, fund balance appropriation section for you. So you'll see that go up. Are there any specific questions about the uh, finance report that I can address? No? All right, moving on, we have uh, the independent audit report. And as you know, we uh, have this conducted as part of the citywide audit each year. Uh, while there might be some minor management letter comments, there's nothing uh, in the audit and has not been in, in since I've been here uh, that was uh, uh, significant enough to, uh, to qualify the opinion on the audit. So as usually we have a qualified, an, an unqualified opinion on the audit, and I think that's stated as such in the, uh, in the paragraph before you. I will say that uh, this includes the um, uh, independent audit report, and it's, so we're presenting this information to the proper level of management, and you can read down through what the auditor responsibility is and the management's responsibility. Um, and also the basis of accounting that's used and that we're following government uh, audit uh, standards. So the news is it's good news. While we may have some minor uh, findings at each school, nothing rose to the occasion of qualifying the opinion, and that's, that's a very good thing that we've had one unqualified for so long. So are there any specific questions on the audit report before you that? Just that congratulations. I is that, yeah, because there's always something little. You know, there's a lot of small change that flows through our schools. I mean, you're talking $2 for this, $5 for that, field trips, and that's a lot of um, little stuff to manage, and I think it's, it's hard, you know. I've and we, we all had a very difficult year this past year, and to, to have this come out the way it did, it just shows um, the professionalism, not only who's there now, but who, who was there before. It's just very, uh, very good sign. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the budget, and I, I presented a two-page handout. If each of you has that, it's a, I think it should be a hard copy. It's got a section I'm going to read verbatim. I hope I hope if I can see it with my glasses. Oh. Now this this is going to be for the public as much for you, but I, I think there's it's important for everyone to understand. There's three phases to the budget each year, and just briefly I'll go down through what happens each time in each phase. So you have the original budget bill. <clears throat> Virginia operates under a two-year biennial budget cycle. Each year, the governor prepares the proposed budget bill for introduction by the General Assembly. The bill is initially adopted in even-numbered years and amended in odd-numbered years. And that's part of the reason you have a long session versus a short session. Um, the second step, budget amendments, amendments to the budget bill by the House or Senate can add, modify, endorse, or delete items in the governor's proposed budget. Before the General Assembly adjourns each year, a conference committee resolves any differences between the versions passed by the two houses. And that's why we mentioned there's a crossover day each year where the bills cross over to the conference committee. 
This last piece, I don't think everyone's aware of it, and this is a very critical piece too because it's a communications piece. So there are committee reports each year. There are reports by the House Appropriations Committee and the Senate Finance Committee staff critically examine the governor's introduced budget, analyze funded and unfunded items, and consider alternative approaches and develop and recommend funding policies. So that's kind of on the tail end, and it's a piece that's critically important so that the schools, the superintendents, and everyone in the public knows what happened with that bill. On the education side, uh, there's an education liaison who you can uh, contact and get some detailed information from on the House side and the Senate side. So they actually have a full-time position for that, and they have as long as I've been working in schools. So the second page is really just uh, a reprint for the most part of the work session that we had back in January. <clears throat> and just for the public's information, if not yours, uh, quickly I'll go through um, you know, what we expect or what we're asking for. And it's a very minimal budget. The payroll benefits would just be a 2% across the board increase. That's about $631,304. We have uh, additional staff positions. Uh, right now we have one at each of the schools and one special ed position. And that totals about $430,000 and that includes their benefits. We have a health insurance uh, increase projected here of about 12%. And so, um, you know, our pool uh, that we're in is experiencing, um, you know, an, an average year, I guess I'll call it, as far as experience. However, we as a school division are, uh, we're utilizing the plan a little bit more than the pool average. So it, it's difficult to predict, but everyone we've talked to up to the point of, pre of preparing this said, you know, to expect something close to 12% or in that range. Um, but we have our fingers crossed that when we get the final numbers, it'll be a little less. Uh, we also have a BRS rate decrease. And if you remember, there was a, uh, it's under 1%. Um, however, that's such a large number it's applied to. It's applied to something called the credible compensation and that's uh, just about the total payroll uh, in, in absolute dollars. So that decreases about 112,000. And then we have all the things that we hear about in the, in the newspaper, pencils, papers, pens, equipment, office materials, all of the purchase services, all of those other lines add up to about $145,340. And if you'll recollect in the last few years, uh, we have tightened down uh, on each of those line items and so it's been, I, I think, difficult over the last three or four years for the principals and their staff because we just haven't been able to add much money for those, those type of line items. <clears throat> so the total is $1,518,322. The increase in the state funding from, from, the, uh, from the governor's proposed budget was $385,959. We do expect some movement on that. Hopefully it's in the positive direction rather than negative because the two houses uh, both need to work together to, uh, to address some of the new bills that have come on the floor. Uh, but after doing the math, that leaves the increase in funding requests from the city at $1,132,363. And again, going back to uh, something Dr. Melton talked about, I think three or four years ago, um, to do the programs that we have and to move forward and be successful like we have been, it's, it's about a million dollars a year. Things are gonna change, VRS may go up, something else may go down or vice versa. Um, but this is a bare minimum uh, budget increase for the programs that we have in our city schools. So are there any comments or questions I can try to fill, M Mrs. K? Oh, just a quick question. When you talked about programs, this budget includes the approval of any new programs that came forward as a request for the next budget cycle? Yes. Not, not all programs requested um, at the department level, but at the budget committee level, that's everything that we considered to go for. So to, to be explicit, there could be some, some sort of program or uh, project or, or cost that was requested, and, and we just don't believe it's gonna get funded by the city. So we've tried to do a minimal budget presentation for that, for that type of thing. There, there are no major initiatives in this budget. That's yeah, and that's what really discourages me from year to year to year to year. There are no major initiatives for the children. Nothing out of the box thinking, no reserve research or innovation is what we call it in the business world. But at some point, um, maybe it's the fund balance you reserve for, you know, the, um, new ideas, new programs. Are we too heavy on the academic and less on vocational? 
you know, we just never get to experience hearing those things. I'm sure you do, Dr. Melton, but from a board, <laughs> I'm sure because they're coming to you, but from a board perspective, it's just these basic categories every year. And um, so if you are approving something special during budget time, that would maybe increase the vocational area or the academic area. It would be nice to hear about it, that it's in there. It's just that we don't get that. We just get these line items. But I'm sure you are um, addressing it, and maybe it was the work session that, that it came out of in more detail that you know we don't get to hear about. I believe the programs that Mr. Baker is talking about are smaller school-based programs as far as the initi uh, division initiatives, really the only thing, the big thing that we're focusing on is the IB implementation across the division. Mm -hmm. um, the IB implementation, we're doing just as you mentioned, we're using money from our fund balance mm -hmm. to pay for the training. You know, mm -hmm. The fund balance has to be a one-time expense. I, absolutely, I know. You can't hire those kind of things. We are looking into, as a matter of fact, I was at a meeting last week, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll be working with Germana to offer more dual enrollment classes and some more career and technical education classes. And we are still in conversations with Spotsylvania mm -hmm. about um, regional career and technical education. Okay. So, but none of those things would ha have an impact on the operating budget. Most likely, they would be funding out of the um, oh, okay. uh, fund balance. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Would you like to give us your update? Oh yes, please. Okay. I apologize to the staff. I don't have enough copies for you to see what. I'm about to pass out, but I'll try to go slowly. I don't know how I ended up being the go-to person <laughs> for uh, recycling. I appreciate that you are. Yeah, I'd like to think it's because I'm known as a guy who gets things done, but that's not the case. <laughs> uh, I know exactly, I, I vividly remember how it happened. Uh, Dr. Gordon, at the time, was supposed to go to a meeting that he couldn't go to, and Mr. Baker was supposed to fill in. Remember that? Vaguely. Va oh, vaguely. I vividly remember. Anyway, uh, I ended up at a meeting of the Clean Green Commission. So, um, apparently, the city has... Um, made it a priority to expand recycling and composting in the city, including requirements for recycling in city offices, schools, and at events. And I joke about not knowing how I got there, but I actually think it was providential that I ended up at that meeting. And as I go through this, you'll see why. Um, you all know that uh, our mission as, as a school is to educate our children. And we have a lot of, of issues and, and items to balance. Uh, recycling is not necessarily on that high priority list for us, uh, even though it's important. And there are people who think recycling is uber important. And the fact that I'm on that committee, I think, uh, gives us a way to manage all of that and still meet the city's um, requirement for recycling um, as it relates to us in the schools. So what I wanted to do was really go through what I've been doing, uh, my conversations with the commission, and to let you know uh, where, we, where we are. I've been able to, I think, help the commission, and hopefully that gets back to the city, to understand that how we get recycling done in the city is through evolution, that it happens very slowly, um, and that um, it's really step by step. So back in, uh, back in March, uh, you will remember we had some students come to us. Here, let me pass this out. We had some students from, I want to say, uh, Walker Grant come to us 
from the National Junior Honor Society, or as Walker Grant, right? And made a presentation. Um, they came with, at the time, uh, Mr. Uh, Court, Robert uh, Cordage, who is the chairperson of the Clean Green Commission. And they made a pr presentation to us. Uh, after that, I had a conversation with the Clean Green Commission and I asked them to make some sort of request of us so that we might publicly state our position uh, on recycling and our support of it, uh, which they did. I think they came, they sent us a request. We decided uh, not to do that for whatever reason. I think time was the issue with what they were asking for World Environment Day. And we uh, offered to do uh, a, uh, a report that detailed what we currently do in recycling. You all rem will remember that? That was uh, back in August. Uh, once we produced that report, and we are doing some really good stuff, once we produced that report, I then asked the Clean Green Committee to do two things the commission to do two things, one of which they did back in December, and the other is forthcoming. The first thing I asked them to do was look at what we had presented in terms of what we're already doing and give us a 30,000 foot view of what they might offer as some recommendations to us. They did that back in December, and we have those. The second thing I asked the commission to do was to get down in the weeds and that's where we are now, is to take one of those um, opportunities. Hugh Mercer presented something. Hugh Mercer currently recycles 34,000 pounds of waste. Uh, Lafayette does something uh, currently uh, 1,100 uh, 1, cubic yards of material. Walker Grant has something. JM has something. And I asked the commission to give us the 30,000 uh, foot view but also to look at one of these operations that we already have and advise us on how the city could expand that program and support it with the resources that the city is wanting to put behind this partnership with the, with, with the schools. And that's where they are. Um, we've talked about uh, resources from the city, from public works, perhaps coming into Hugh Mercer to uh, assess what Hugh Mercer does to get those 34,000 pounds and how they could go from 34 to 50. Maybe it's all kinds of possibilities. What can the city do uh, with the students? How they can support and expand what we already do because if we're going to spend money, our teachers need a raise. If we're going to spend money, we need new programs for innovative programs and we're already doing something, and the document that they presented says expand, and how you expand from the grassroots is you see what we're doing, how you bring people to the table, how you evolve a program, and how you move forward is you see what's happening, and you pull resources in it, and you make it grow. That's where the commission is. That's their task. Um, we have offered uh, what we do, and at the next meeting, I expect uh, that they will produce some in the weeds um, presentation for us, some steps, some things uh, that they can offer to, I told them to pick one, pick one of these programs, the one that maybe it pre presents the least uh, path of resistance and see how they can expand that and then we'll have something uh, to act on. All parties will be at the table and we'll have something real that we can, can really take a look at. And so that's where we are um, with the recycling and my work with the commission. Thank you. Okay. We, do, we really do appreciate that, Jarvis, because it, it's not a cause that we don't care about. Like you said, if we look at our budget and the priorities, it's a, a good thing to care about. Yeah. So thank you very much. Absolutely. If I might add, um, Reverend Bailey, we have four or five graduate students that are doing a project-based learning activity, uh, doing a complete re review of the recycling programs and making recommendations. I want to be a little bit careful 
okay. that one group is not stepping on the other group because we asked, the administration asked, right. our group, uh, I was not aware of this December 18th memo, hadn't seen it, um, and I think our people have, have really started uh, moving okay. forward with their program. So you might want to let the Clean and Green Commission. Right, to talk with them. I mean, I think that's a step in the right direction. Okay. And it doesn't cost us anything. That's, and, you know, um, again, I say it's providential that me being on the school board, having been there, um, also being in education, being a reverend, being able to, to, to say, here's what we're really looking at, here's how we move this thing forward, um, I think it's worked out because as you all know, we have lots of priorities and you know how some people feel about recycling. You got all these uh, differing opinions at all different levels and so forth and so on. And I think we actually are moving in the right direction. And what I said to them is we got to find common ground and we're going to move on that common ground. Once we find the common ground, then we can begin to, to build some sort of relationship. Everybody wants it. It's a good thing. But there's no way I can advocate for spending dollars on this particular program when our teachers haven't had a raise. Mm -hmm. Where's uh, Ms. Robinson? We, we, <laughs> amen, right? Okay. <laughs> so anyway, it's all good. All right. Thank yeah. you. All right. So next we have old business. Um, the VSBA Regional Forum or North, Northeast Regional Forum will be held at Manassas Park High School, March 21st, 2018. Please let Ms. Wright know as soon as possible if you need to attend. Um, Janet's a two boy. I would like to go, I need to check on my calendar, but I don't think we can go. Um, and then we have new business. The VSBA Southwest Hot Topic Conference will be held in Wytheville. March 14th, 2018. This year, attendees will hear about how partnerships can support student success. Virginia Department of Education representatives will discuss mental health and creating trauma response in schools and will also learn about the need for integrated student support, teaching problem solving and empowerment through traditional hands-on lessons. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, please let Ms. Wright know if you're interested in going to that one. for the good of the order. Um, for the good of the order, I guess it could fall under this uh, an update on the meeting that Chairman Ream and I had with the City Council uh, members, our, our monthly meeting. This month we met with Mayor Greenlaw and Councilman Kelly, city staff, and school board staff. And the main topic of, con of discussion is looking forward um, and talking about building a new school. So we, again, it was a fairly um, congenial meeting. The city did take considerable time to impress upon us some of the big projects that they have coming down the pike, including the wastewater treatment plant that has linked up the overall city debt and sort of how that county would work and it's gonna be very difficult for them with the bill going to that same timing, a new elementary school and then in addition to going to another. We did talk a little bit about sites for new schools. There is a, a land proffered in Right Alive to the city, um, ostensibly to build a school, but the city, it was, the agreement was a little bit um, wide open where they could use that land for something else. It's 27 acres. It, if you're coming from Home Depot, and right, down on the left, right, right before the circle. on the left, where the mansion was, or, or it meets up there. to that meets property, to that it's on that side. So, uh, so we did talk about that. We've asked them to also come forward with any other parcels of land. Um, we looked at development. So discussions are ongoing. Um, but the city staff and council are very concerned about the debt load. I think they have accurate information. Um, Nick, can we have this outside of the, the order so it can be a discussion 
from a school board perspective because um, as you meet with the city, I'd like the board as a whole to weigh in on what Ms. Um, Nella Richards has brought to the table because it, it, I think, begs discussion. I'll need the school is strictly based on the development in the city and the growing population. So I just think that, you know, as a board, we should discuss it further and therefore have it as an agenda item as opposed to do it as an order so that we can. We can, and, and okay. that was really an update, but I, I agree that we should. I mean, we had the meeting with City Council and Mosley. Oh, when was that? Were you here just in December? <coughs> yeah, it was before. So that's where okay. we got the, you know, all, all of the numbers. But I have this, I have, and I brought this up at the meeting today. I, I have some of the same issues mm -hmm. because they also want, need, we need a new firehouse mm. because of all the building <laughs> that's gone on, the residential building that's mm -hmm. gone on in the False Hill corridor. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we have a fire department downtown and then we have the one on Route 3, on Route 3 which you know kind of serves from, they can reach from there south and then downtown gets downtown, but they have a spot that's hard to cover out there at Central mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. Shockingly, when you build all of that stuff, right, right. you need services for it. So that that was brought up at the meeting, but I do think we could maybe um, in the next couple months. Just where should we put that? We'll put it on information items. Information yeah. items, yeah. and we can update you all. Yeah. Okay. And right. You can make a report to the rest of the board on the information. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we've already scheduled meeting for March. March. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. So. Um, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Floyd, seconded by Ms. Kay. All in favor say aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned at 8.20. Oh, oh.